folks, this is Jay, I hope you're okay today. <clears throat> We're looking at Christ and culture, and uh, this is a public lecture. Uh, the public lectures that I've been doing are lectures that have been well researched with footnotes and what have you, and um, they're mainly to encourage you to think through issues, uh, so they're quite in depth and quite detailed. Uh, I give the references at, er at the end of every lecture. Um, I hope to be doing preaching in a few weeks time uh, so these are more academic presentations. My lecture will ask what do I mean by Christ and culture? Second, Christ of culture, four Christ above culture, five Christ and culture in par paradox and then Christ the transformer of culture and then conclusion. What do I mean by Christ and culture? First I need to define what I mean by Christ. The understanding of Christ I will have affect, will affect my view of understanding culture. There are some basic lines of thought needed here. I must realize that Christ has influenced history. I must see how Christ has received negative and positive reaction from all periods of history. All this means that neat statements of who he is um, need to be refined in terms of um, what people have been saying over history. Christ seems bigger than our understanding of him. Albert Schweizer said Christ was the bringer of eschatological hope, but Christ is bigger than this. For Boltman, but Christ is bigger than this. I agree with Niebuhr that Christ is bigger than our conceptual framework. What I can say is that if I fail to take the totality of the New Testament seriously, then my view of Christ will be small. Hi, Mark. Hi, brother. Are you all right? Yeah, I've just given a lecture, mate. Oh, all right. Yeah, are you <laughs> busy? Right? No, it's okay. Are you okay, mate? Yeah, I'm great, yeah. Yeah. I've got this Bible study thing here. Yeah. I done an anxiety last week. You know with that cell group. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what you think of it. Yeah, we we can. Do, do you want to do that then for a bit, and then I'll get on with the lecture. Yeah. All right. It's just uh, Luke twelve. Yeah. Right, it's recorded. Is that all right, Mark? Yeah. All right. Turn to Luke 12. <coughs> I'm just speaking quiet because they're, they're all in bed and I don't want to wake them up. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Just saying, those who are going to be listening, that this is a, a colleague of mine who's going into the Anglican ministry and he's going to give us a Bible study. And then we'll get on with the lecture. Thank you. Go on, Mark. So it's Luke 12, verses 22 to 34. And this is Jesus speaking. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, only I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass which today is in the field, and tomorrow was thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, or you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat, or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind, for all these things the nations of the world seek after. And your father knows what you need, that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, 
for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give arms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old. As, as a treasure in heaven that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The question is, how, as Christians, can we cope with anxiety and worry? Mm. And John MacArthur, the preacher, says that this passage here that we've just read mm. basically tells us that when we're in the kingdom of God, mm. we can expect an anxiety free life. Mm. And so there's some steps, there's four steps we can remember as Christians about how we can live mm. an anxiety free life. And the first one is trust in God, which I'll talk about a bit. The second one is remembering God's provision and priority. The third is reflect on God's character and his love for you. And the fourth one is understand God's pleasure towards you. And he says, as MacArthur says, the world offers medication to control anxiety and stress management. The best the world can offer is to manage or medicate anxiety. And then he says this, this is the most indulged, the most lavish society ever. This is the most comfortable society ever. This is the society that has the most, but it seems to be the most angst-ridden, anxious, stressed out and panic culture ever. We have a massive medical world that exists to do nothing but to help people with stress. No worry goes unnamed, no worry goes undefined, no worry goes uncatalogued, no worry goes undiagnosed, and no worry goes unmediated. They just go unrelieved. People live with anxiety, they live with worry, they live with stress, but it's so common that we don't even talk about eliminating it. The term is to manage it. So God doesn't want anxiety ruin our life. And uh, he talks about not worrying. He talks about how um, God feeds the birds mm. and clothes nature. Mm, mm. You know, people worry your day about food, about fashion. Yeah. You know, they become eating machines or mannequins. Uh, many people today are not living life, they're actually just surviving. Mm. It's to get through the week, to, to get the, the payday so they can get out. Mm. Um, but Jesus says here, don't worry. Don't do it. Now, the answer is given. It sounds um, a little naive, but he says, study nature. Yeah. And it says in the Bible, fear not, more than 365 times. That's yeah. one th for each day. Yeah. You know, Jesus is not given breathing techniques, or he doesn't tell people to, you know, do yoga. He just says, doesn't, don't do it. And the passage, it's about where our heart is. You know, if, we, if our heart is in the world, we're going to live under, power, under the power of the world system, which breeds anxiety. Yeah. If our heart is in the kingdom, we will live under the power of the kingdom system, yeah. which is righteousness, joy, and peace. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Johnson, the author, said this. He says, our refusal to fear reminds the devil that he is finished. And this may really sound a bit harsh, yeah. but worry comes through ignorance <laughs> or unbelief about what God has said in his word. Wow, yeah. So people are anxious because, number one, the ignorance of what God says about it. Yeah. Or number two, they do know and they have unbelief yeah. and they, they continue to worry. So Psalm 131 says this. So 
So the first question is, how do we live an anxiety-free life? The first thing is, trust God. Mm. Psalm 131. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Mm. Surely I have calmed and quietened my soul like a winged child with his mother. Like a winged child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forever. Mm. So it's about trusting God. Yeah. Trusting God. The second thing is remember God's provision and priority. God is a God who provides. Mm. When God's ruling our life, we can expect him to supply everything we need. What you were telling me today. Mm. God's priority is that we keep focused on Jesus and bringing in the kingdom rule to other people's lives. Mm. Basically, the kingdom of God is the rule of God in the world. Yeah. The rule of Jesus. You know, people become what they focus on. Yeah, yeah. If they focus on worry, they'll worry. Yeah. If they yeah. Be, if they focus on on um, on wanting money all the time, they become money oriented. Yeah, yeah. But the answer is to focus on Jesus. We become what we focus on. Wow. So the the second thing is we've got to remind ourselves that God is our provision and our priority. Mm. The third one is understand God's pleasure towards you. I think this is amazing. In Luke twelve thirty two it says these words. It says, do not fear, there's that command, do not fear little flock, mm. for it is your father's good pleasure to, to give you the kingdom. Mm. He's saying it's, it's God's good pleasure to give you his rule. Mm. God delights when he's ruling in people's lives and hearts and minds. Mm. And then we ask, we've got to ask, well, the, what is the kingdom of God? You know, it tells us that the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, mm. but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's from Romans. Yeah. So God is saying, I delight in giving you righteousness. I delight in giving you peace. I delight in giving you joy. Yeah, yeah. When God and Christ is ruling our lives, we can expect to have peace and joy uh. and um, righteousness. Now, anxiety comes because we think we're going to lose something we need in order to be happy. Uh. So, how do we cope with anxiety? One, we trust God. Two, we remember God's provision and priority. Three, we understand God's pleasure towards us. And the fourth one mm. is reflect on God's character and his love for you. Mm. Reflect on God's character and his love for you. Psalm 145. Yeah. <laughs> Psalm 145. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 145, yeah. verse 8. Now, this is something to think about. Because yeah. there's a question after it. It says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Uh, that is a definition into the nature of God. Uh, it's a scripture about the nature of God. It tells us he's gracious, full of compassion, uh, slow to anger, great in mercy, 
good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. That's five things. Gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, great in mercy, good to all. Sorry, six. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Yeah. We've got to ask ourselves this question. Do our feelings match these truths? match these truths of God's nature. Mm. So how we feel about our, about God and ourselves, yeah. are they in line with that revelation of God's nature? Because yeah. I think God wants our feelings and our emotions to be in line with who, who he says he is, yeah. his character. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing, mate. Uh, Psalm 139 yeah. says this, 1-18, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me in behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day, the darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed me in my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance before, yet unformed, and in your book all my days were written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Yeah. That's just basically saying God knows us. Wow. God knows you. God knows me. Wow. The question is, how do we feel with the thought that God knows all about us? Yeah. Do you know that God loves us the same as he loved Jesus? Yeah. John seventeen twenty three says this. This is an amazing scripture, this brother. Yeah. John 17, 23. This is when he's praying for the believers. Yeah. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Yeah. In another translation, it says this. You have, it says that you have sent me and have loved them the same as you loved me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's great definitions of that scripture saying, you know, God, there's a revelation that yeah. God loves me and you the same way he loves Jesus. His love is no less for you or for me than it was for Jesus. Wow, that's amazing, mate. So I was just thinking about this again. Is it possible for our feelings to be in line with the truth of God's nature and how he feels about us? Go back to that psalm, that uh, 139. Yeah. The whole, that, that, that talks about your search being in Do You know, that psalm, it speaks of God's omnipotence. Yeah. Shows us God's all powerful. He knows all about us. Yeah. It talks about His omnipresence. 
that is is there. Yeah. It talks about his uh, his nature being all good. Is it benevolent? His goodness. Yeah. Uh, omniscient. He's all knowing. So the whole that that psalm tells us two things. That psalm one three nine it tells us God knows us, but it also tells us all about God. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like looking in a mirror. Yeah. Which is good. So just thinking about that, um, is it possible that our feelings and our thinking? Mm. Because our our feelings and our thinking impact our actions. Yeah, yeah. Our feelings need to be in line and our behaviour with the nature of God. Mm. 